Whether or not you are a Luminar Neo fan or user, you've probably heard about the recent announcement by Skylum. It has the internet ablaze with what some people consider controversial aspects of this latest update. Hi, I'm Darlene from Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video, I'll give you the details of some of the exciting stuff that's coming soon. And if you stick around till the end, I'll weigh in on what all the fuss is about and try and clarify some of the confusion around things such as the pricing model. So if you're ready, let's dig in. The major takeaway of this announcement is that Skylum is going to be adding generative AI technologies into Luminar Neo. It's kind of come full circle because Skylum was an early adopter of AI with tools such as their Accent AI and Portrait Boca AI. Many people were against such tools and now that Adobe has introduced Photoshop Beta with generative AI, everybody's on the bandwagon. One thing that sets Skylum apart is a firm belief that AI should serve and support photographers, not replace them. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some of the new tools that are going to be introduced this fall. The first one is called Studio Light, and as of now, it is the only one that partners like myself have been given a trial version to test out. According to Skylum's press release, it is designed to replicate studio lighting effects. So what does that mean in layman's terms? Well, I can tell you on the few tests that I ran, I was really impressed. Doesn't have to be a studio portrait. This will work on any photo with a person. Here's an image that I downloaded from a stock website and the lighting was a little bit flat and not that great, to be honest. I did some basic editing using the existing tools in Luminar Neo and came up with this variation. Then I took it into the Studio Light tool. And yes, this one is going to be a tool, not an extension. I'll come back to that when we talk about the pricing model as to who qualifies to get this new tool. Have a look at what I was able to produce using Studio Light with this image. It blew my mind. It works similar to Face Light, which is in the Face AI tool. The difference here though is that you can place the direction of light and you have a lot more control over how it appears. Let me show you another example. This is the tool of all the things that have been announced that I am the most excited about, for me anyways, as a portrait photographer. Here's another stock image, unedited. First, I applied Face AI and adjusted the face light slider to do exactly that, brighten the face a little. And you can see that it does indeed do a good job. But let's see the difference when I apply studio light and you'll notice how many more controls there are. By the time this tool is delivered to you, the interface may look slightly different or the tools may have different names, but I imagine it's going to work very similarly. When I turn it on and off, you can see that now you have a way to adjust the light and move it around. So you can have it come from the left, the top or the right. You can also do things like adjust the intensity, the brightness overall, and you can do special effects such as create a strip light or dot light effect. Personally, I don't have a lot of use for those, but this one I'm going to be using quite a bit. Currently this tool is in the essentials panel and it's designed to be used on portrait images, but I've tried it on a few others as well, including this image of a flower. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the original image and one variation I created using Studio Light. This is the only tool that I have applied to this image. And by simply moving around the placement of the depth center and adjusting some of the sliders, you can get a completely different look. For example, I can change the pattern and the texture and do something a little more dramatic, like this. So I'm excited to try it on different kinds of images. Skylum has said this tool will be delivered at the end of August and the rest will follow later this fall. Let's take a look at those. As I mentioned, I don't have access to try or demonstrate them at this point, but I have seen two of them in action. 
when I was in Portugal with the Skylum team and I was meeting with Nick and Dima, who are on the development team, I got a sneak peek and I couldn't tell you. So now I'm able to talk about it. The first one is Water Enhancer. As you can see by the before and after, it will recognize water in your scene, such as ocean, lake, river, or stream, and allow you to adjust it and enhance it to make it more visually impactful in your image. This is another one that I can see myself using quite a bit. The next one is called Neon and Glow, and it does just that. It will allow you to apply an effect around the subject. I'm not super excited about this one, but as has happened with previous updates to Luminar Neo and tools that I thought I would never use, I'll give it a go when it arrives and you never know. I might find it really useful. That's one thing that I really like about Luminar Neo actually is it provides tools and allows me to do techniques that I might not otherwise have tried. That's a good thing. Getting outside your comfort zone and experimenting will allow you to grow as a photographer. Generase is the next tool. It would be like an enhanced or supercharged eraser. Using content aware fill technology, it will allow you to remove things in your image that are unwanted, such as a trash can or a road sign, fill in gaps like missing corners from panorama images, or do things like remove reflections in eyeglasses. Another thing that I'm really excited about because that is a really challenging thing to do. So I'm eager to give that a try. Similarly, Scene Expand will allow you to increase the canvas size of your image and fill in the missing parts. So once again, if you've merged a panorama and there are parts missing around the edge, you'll be able to fill those in with this tool. Scene Swap is the final tool that they've announced and it's for swapping things out in your image. For example, changing clothing or swapping out part of the foreground or the sky. And we already have Sky AI and a sky replacement, so I'm eager to see how this is different. Along with these new tools, Gylem has promised a refurbished and refreshed user interface and navigation. What that looks like, we have no idea yet. I'm hoping that means that things like the film strip comes back in the editing view, fingers crossed for that one, among other things like perhaps metadata editing. We'll have to wait and see. Before I continue, I want to read a quote from Ivan, the CEO of Skylum. He says, as photography keeps evolving, AI should be seen as an opportunity, not a threat. Think about what makes a photo special, the creative ideas behind it, the personal touch, the experience of making the photo. I had the opportunity to meet him in Portugal with the rest of the team, and he's an amateur photographer himself. So know that the person behind driving all of these things into Luminar Neo is just like you. He's an amateur photographer that just wants to take photos and process them to make them look good. I don't know about you, but I think that's fantastic. And I certainly haven't had the opportunity to meet and greet the entire Adobe team or the CEO. So I feel much more connected to the Skylum team because it's a smaller team and a smaller company. They have a closer connection with their partners like myself and with their customers like you. Okay, okay, let's get to the heart of the matter and the source of the most confusion and controversy, the pricing model. Let me go through the options with you because Skylum has said they're trying to simplify it because they've been taking feedback that is too complicated and people are still confused. So let me see if I can demystify it for you a little bit. When you head to the Skylum website, you'll see the button here to view the various different plans. Previously, there was three different subscription models that included different amounts of things. Now they've streamlined it so that if you pay the monthly or the annual subscription, you get everything with two licenses. That's current with all tools and extensions. As you can see on this page here, now you have three options, but it all gives you the same thing. You can pay monthly and the price is $14.95. This is in US dollars, or you can pay annually and pay for 12 months upfront, which means you save quite a bit of money and it ends up being only $8.25 a month. 
Or if you purchase it during the early bird special, which runs until August 27th, you can buy the 24 month plan and it works out to only $6.21 a month. That's basically a Starbucks coffee. It's really reasonable and it's still significantly less than the Adobe subscription. If you are using Luminar Neo, this is the method I suggest. Go for the 24 month subscription, use my discount code DPM10 and you'll get an additional 10% off that. So your price will be under $6 a month. You just have to pay for 24 months upfront. All right, where the confusion comes in is what if you have an existing subscription or if you purchased a lifetime license? The term lifetime license is confusing in and of itself because what's happening is people are assuming that they've paid for this license and they now have free updates to Luminar Neo for a lifetime. That is not the case. What it means is when you've purchased the license, the date that you purchased it, you get any updates up to that date and usually for a period after that, approximately a year, and any extensions up to that date. It doesn't mean you get infinite updates for free. You can see here on the purchase page, it will describe exactly what you get. And it says the product is yours forever, including eight pro extensions. But if you look at the price, it's $249. Versus if you get the two year subscription, it's only $149. So it's kind of a no brainer. Now note that all of these prices are for brand new customers. If you have an existing lifetime license and you'd like to get the upgrade, you can buy what's called a Creative Journey Pass for $39 currently. After the early bird sale, it would be $79. So if you are in that situation, just get it now, or you can choose to switch to the annual plan for just $49. Either way, I do highly recommend the subscription model, and I don't know why so many people are against it. I know when Adobe first came out with it a few years ago, everybody lost their minds and jumped ship from Adobe. And now the same thing seems to be happening with Luminar. I'm seeing lots of complaints online, in Facebook groups and social media, and the internet is abuzz with people jumping off the bandwagon. But don't be so hasty. People are saying it's just a money grab. Skylum's getting super greedy now. Every time they add a new feature, they charge more money. Well, guess what? That's how it goes in the rest of the world. Other people are saying they're confused and angry and they feel ripped off by Skylum. Well, honestly, if that's the case for you, then maybe this is just not the product for you. But bear with me for a minute. Think about these things. What other things do we pay for monthly that might be considered a subscription, including other kinds of software? Me, personally, I pay for Adobe. I have a monthly Zoom subscription so I can meet with my tutoring students. I have something called StreamYard, which allows me to do my weekly YouTube live videos. Then I also have Amazon Prime, which gives me free delivery and television. Netflix, don't forget about Netflix. How about Google Drive for storage? I also have Backblaze, which is online backup. And let's consider this. What about your cell phone? You pay for that every month based on the amount of service that you use. So why is photo editing software any different? We are in the digital age and companies spend a lot of money on research and development. They cannot just continually make new products and not charge more money for them. It's not a realistic or sustainable business model. So if you enjoy their software and you want them to continue making products and to be around, you need to support their business on an ongoing basis. It's not realistic to expect to spend $50 on something and get lifetime updates for free. The world just doesn't work that way, I'm afraid. If you're still unhappy about it or agree with that methodology, let me walk you through another scenario. Let's say you go to a car lot and you lease a vehicle. You pay monthly to have that vehicle, and then at the end of the lease, whatever that term may be, you have some options. You can extend the lease and continue paying monthly. You can buy out the lease and pay for the rest of the car, or you can start a whole new lease and get a new car. At any rate, you're going to be paying more money to have that car and keep it. 
If you go to the lot and you choose to buy the car instead of lease it, you pay a set amount of money and whatever options are on that car when you drive off the lot, that's what you get. You don't get to drive back to the lot a year from now and say, well, I'd like the latest upgrade, please, for free. As I said, the world just doesn't work that way. I wish it did, but it doesn't. We have to pay an appropriate amount for the tools that we want to use. A few of the other complaints that I've seen come up on the internet are things like Luminar Neo is buggy or it's gimmicky. My answer to that is lots of software is buggy. I've even had my Lightroom crashing recently. And when you consider that Adobe's been around for 30 plus years and Lightroom's been around for about 15 and Luminar Neo is only 18 months old, if Adobe's crashing, give Skylum and Luminar Neo a break. Yes, there are going to be some bugs. Yes, there might be a few things that you consider gimmicky. Just don't use them. The bugs are constantly being fixed. Even while they are making fancy new bells and whistles, a separate team of developers is working on the fixes. So those things are always happening at the same time. They're not doing one or the other. And whenever they release an update, they have some new things and they have some fixes. So let me ask you this. Are you hopping off the Luminar Neo bandwagon? Or are you excited to see where it goes and you're in it for the long haul? Which camp do you fall into? Tell me in the comment area below. Let's keep the discussion civil though, please. Remember, if you decide you want to purchase or upgrade your Luminar Neo, use my discount code DPM10 to get an additional 10% off when you check out. If you're fully invested in Luminar Neo and you're ready to take your learning experience to the next level, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course now. Alternately, you could stay here on YouTube and watch another video. Whatever you do, make the best decision for you. Happy photo editing, and we'll see you next time.